Hey, welcome everyone into the Wells Tech Garage for this month's episode of Tech Connect. Thank you for joining me today. This one should be short and sweet. I got a couple comments that I want to talk about. I want to talk about the Wells Tech t-shirt giveaway question and uh, that should wrap it up for today. So why don't we first start with the t-shirt question and for those of you guys that don't remember, it was two techs are discussing a P0443 purge solenoid circuit code. With the key turned on and the purge solenoid unplugged, one of the techs grabs a DVOM and puts the red lead pin in pin A and the black lead in pin B of the harness side of the purge connector. The meter reads zero volts, emission one fuse is okay. So what does tech A do? He starts inspecting the harness for an open circuit between the fuse and the purge solenoid, right? If our fuse is okay, it can't be the bad, a bad fuse, so there must be an open in the circuit, right? Technician B grabs the scan tool with bi-directional control. Who's on the right path? Tech A, B, neither or both? Both or neither. Um, the answer to the question is technician B. Technician A is really just wasting his time at this point because he doesn't quite understand the circuit control. Or it's Friday afternoon and his brain is fried from a long week of work, who knows. But technician B is definitely on the right path. And the reason we know that is because of this point right here. Okay, but let's not jump to this yet. First of all, what we need to understand and remember is that electricity works in a loop, okay? It is always going to leave and want to come back to the same place. Now, it's not really fair to us as technicians because we're not given the full loop. If you see the diagram here, it looks like it's going to ground inside of the PCM. And sure, that is mostly true, but what's actually happening is that somewhere here, this ground piece right here is somehow finding its way back to battery negative, okay? So this piece in most of our diagrams is missing unless we look up the power and ground feed diagrams for the PCM. But what we know is that this is a ground um, side control, PCM ground side controlled for our purge solenoid. Meaning this switch in here opens and closes at the PCM's request giving us a pulse width modulated purge solenoid. Okay, it's going to open rapidly at different duty cycles to open and close our purge solenoid to different percentages. Okay, so what we also need to remember is that our meter is only, when, when hooked up in voltage, is only a device that is measuring a difference, okay? If I turn this on, in fact, I'll set it right here so you guys should be able to see that, I hope. Hold it out in the air, I have nothing, right? If I hook this up to here, and let's go here, so I'm hooked up to harness side here, harness side here, what am I supposed to measure? That's the question, right? Am I supposed to measure 12 volts or zero volts? Technician A thought you're supposed to see 12 volts here, right? Because we have a battery that's supplying power to a fuse and that comes to here and we have our red lead hooked up here and our black leads hooked up here. So we should measure a difference, right? Be careful. Right now our black lead could be completely unhooked. You know, if, if we're connecting our black lead to this, we might as well not even have it connected to our meter at this point. We're not comparing it against anything that is on the vehicle, okay? What do I mean? This wire right now, right here, is not connected to the vehicle, okay? This wire is some random open circuit that doesn't matter whatsoever right now. We will never be able to measure a voltage differential between something that's connected to our vehicle and something that's not. Okay, in order to measure a voltage differential here and read 12 volts on our meter, because remember, all our meter is doing is reading differentials. So if we have 12 volts on this one, zero volts on this one in the same circuit, we'll read a differential and we'll see 12 volts up on our screen. But they have to be in the same circuit. So what do we have to do to do that? We need to connect our switch, okay? Now we have a path, right? We have a path back to here. So. We have 12 volts on this leg. We have zero volts on this leg back to our battery. Now, with our switch closed, we will read 12 volts on our meter, but we have to close our switch. And that's right what Tech B was going to do. Okay, he was gonna go grab his scan tool, bi-directional control, and he was going to apply 
with the PCM, with the scan tool, he was going to turn the purge solenoid on, use a standard test light. Our test light would get applied across here and here, and at that point we're simulating the load, right? We're creating a path, we're completing the circuit, our test light should light up. If it's able to light up, then we know we have power flowing in, we have a path through our PCM to ground, okay? We're able to light up our test light, and at that point we know our path is okay. You could go ahead, you could do an ohm test across your purge solenoid, sure, if you want to. Um, I guess that would be one step further, but we proved out the circuit is okay. Time to uh, swap out that purge solenoid and call it a day on that diagnosis, okay? Of course there's room for intermittent issues in there, um, but generally this is the way this would be um, diagnosed, okay? All right. Enough blabbing on about that. Let's go to some of the questions and comments. First of all, guys, thank you to everyone who donated via the Super Chat feature on YouTube. I really appreciate that. Um, not necessary, of course, but I really do appreciate you guys donating to, donating to this, the, the cause of the <laughs> Wells training. All right, so Keith, I have a couple comments from you and questions from you up here. So let's start with the first one. Let's not to forget to mention the importance of a proper vacuum supply, which is why I prefer to smoke test these with the engine running. There's less variables. Keith, that is a really, really great point. Um, when we're looking at some of the Chrysler EVAP systems, we need a solid vacuum supply. Most of these are fed with direct engine vacuum. So like you said, smoke test it with the engine running. That way we know we have a good constant vacuum supply with that engine at idle, okay? That's what the vehicle is going to use for testing. That's what we should be using for testing. Great point, Keith. That is an awesome, awesome, awesome point you brought up there. Uh, KD Automotive came on. He said, I hope they upload this live stream so I can watch it later. KD Automotive, I don't know if this is your first time in one of our live streams or not, but after every class when we're done with it, it gets uploaded almost immediately to YouTube as a video that should be out there tomorrow, next week, a year from now, hopefully 10 years from now, it'll still be there. That way, next time you guys get a Chrysler leak detection pump system in there and you're trying to remember what exactly did that, <coughs> excuse me, what exactly did that switch do inside of that leak detection pump or that NVLD or whatever you might be working on, but you remember seeing it in that one Wells video, go ahead, go to YouTube, check out our channel, search through our videos, find it again, refresh yourself on it because chances are I can't remember everything, you guys probably can't remember everything, but the internet holds it for us, okay? It, it holds it there and keeps it there until we're ready to use it again and it keeps it nice and organized so we can just do a little bit of a search function and find it right away. So this video will be out there along with all the past videos and all the future videos that we do. They will be saved out there for you guys to reference at later dates, okay? Keith New Level Auto also came on and said, ask questions to help everyone. The only dumb question is the one not asked. Keith, I completely agree. If you guys have any questions whatsoever, if you maybe just don't completely understand something, you're still scratching your head on a concept, if something didn't quite make sense, if I didn't do a good enough job explaining it to you, please submit a question, either via the live chat function while we're live, the comments after the video, or send me out an email. Whatever you feel is the most appropriate manner for you to reach out and ask a question, please don't hesitate to do it. I want to answer your questions. I'm here for you guys to answer questions. And at the end of the day, if you answer, ask a question, there's a high probability that somebody else has that question too. So everybody then gets to learn as a group, okay? That's what it's all about. We're here to share knowledge, ask questions. If you don't understand something, chances are somebody else doesn't either. I would be happy to share. And if I don't know the answer, guys, I don't have the answer to everything. If I don't know the answer, I will do my best to get it back to you very, very shortly or maybe by the following Tech Connect episode, which answers to one of Keith's questions. Keith asked, what other Chryslers run a fuel tank pressure sensor? At this point, we were talking about the ESIM system on the newer Chryslers that is actually using a fuel tank pressure sensor now. He asked, what other Chryslers are using FTPs? Because NVLD and leak detection pump systems do not. The simplest of answers for you, Keith, is the Chryslers that aren't really Chryslers, okay? The Stratus and Sebring are a perfect example. Um, the convertibles and the sedan Stratus and Sebring were both a Chrysler vehicle, but the coupe 
was a Mitsubishi vehicle, okay? That is gonna be using the Mitsubishi EVAP system which uses a fuel tank pressure sensor, okay? So do not generalize that all old non-ESIM Chrysler EVAP systems don't use a fuel tank pressure sensor, okay? There are gonna be some Chrysler vehicles, even though they're not truly a Chrysler vehicle, they are a Mitsubishi vehicle with a Chrysler badge on it that will use a fuel tank pressure sensor, okay? So keep that in mind when you're diagnosing, and, and you're gonna see this across different systems across the board for different vehicles. Uh, the Volkswagen Rutan, you know, that's actually a Chrysler Town & Country minivan, right? There's always gonna be these vehicles that have this crossover between them, and they're gonna most likely implement that system, okay? The, the Rutan is gonna be just like a Town & Country, just like our um, Sebring Stratus is just like a Mitsubishi, okay? Keep that stuff in mind when you're diagnosing vehicles and looking for information. And what I find sometimes on those vehicles is that they're sometimes lacking information from the service information side for, say, a Volkswagen Rutan. Chances are wire color may be different. There might be a little bit different information, but chances are you can go out and you can look up the same model year of a town and country and get almost all the service information that you're looking for because it's more readily available from the Chrysler side than it would be from the Volkswagen side. So if you're ever scratching your head on one of those diags that you just can't seem to find enough information on it, check out its like vehicle. Same thing with Honda and Acura, or Toyota and Lexus, or Mercury and Ford and Lincoln, okay? They're gonna have these cross models, and, and while the wire color may not remain the same, the principles of the system and its operation will most likely remain the same. Now there's always gonna be the one um, thing that you know objects to the rule but by rule of thumb guys you can cross vehicle platform um, and usually find decent service information if you're lacking in one place or the other okay all right so I think that was quick and easy we talked about the circuit we talked about some comments from you guys let's talk about the next class this next class will air on October 5th let me make sure that's right Yes, October 5th, so next week, Thursday, October 5th at 11 a.m. Central Time on this channel, Wells Vehicle Electronics, 11 a.m. Central Time. We are going to be covering something that's not EVAP for once, finally, right? I feel like we've been talking about EVAP forever, and it's been, uh, we covered base EVAP, two Toyota classes, and a Chrysler class. So we've done four classes in a row now on EVAP. We're going to change it up. I think we're just going to play around with the scope. I got two different vehicles lined up that have um, some faults that the scope really came in handy with diagnosing. So we're gonna just play around with the scope, go through those two diags, and then I wanna just open it up to you guys and let you pick anything that you maybe wanna see that I'm gonna have easy access to um, going ahead and throwing on the scope at that point, okay? So we'll kind of, I'll, I'll kind of take half the class to go through what I want and half the class to address what you guys uh, would maybe like to see that you haven't had the time to look at um, on the vehicle that, that you guys see often that's in the shop. So just for reference for you guys, I have a 2013 Dodge Dart coming in with a 2.0 liter in there, um, automatic. So if there's anything specific you want to see on there, make sure you um, let me know for that one. Otherwise, I have a I'm not gonna get the year right, but it is a mid to late 2000s Jeep um, Commander, I believe it was, coming in. I believe that had the V8 in it, the smaller V8 in that one, for a concern as well. So if there's anything on those that you'd wanna see, definitely let me know, or let me know the day of. I'll be able to pull up a wiring diagram, we'll go through it, and we will scope some stuff, and just, this is kinda gonna be more of a, just a fun class, uh, playing with the scope and showing the different usefulness of a scope and, and how hopefully it'll pique some interest for you guys to get your scopes out and play with them, okay? All right, I think that is about it. So with that, I'm gonna close it out, guys. Happy Friday, I hope everybody has a great weekend. Hope not too many of you are having to work Saturday. Uh, but if you are, happy wrenching everyone and we'll see you next Thursday, October 5th at 11 a.m. Central Time to play with the scope. Don't know what it's going to be called yet, but we are going to play with the scope. All right, guys, we'll see you on Thursday. Have a great weekend, everyone. Thank you.